What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video. We are out here. We are ice fishing. We are in the middle of nowhere today and it feels good. We've kind of been in like high fishing pressure destinations I feel like for the last few days and I just had to get away. So we're out in the middle of nowhere and uh, today we're crappie fishing. We're hopefully going to pound some crappies through the ice. It's kind of that midwinter period now so um, a lot of the spots we normally go are receiving a lot of pressure and fishing just kind of slowing down but today we're hoping to get off the beaten path find some new spots, find some new fish, and try a new lure, which I'm very excited about. Um, it's kind of an older bait, which I've used a ton with great success, um, but with a little twist, and that uh, should be extremely efficient. But anyways, um, yeah, we're out here, we're up in northern Wisconsin, we're doing some crappie fishing today. I gotta get on the snowmobile, I gotta bomb off, catch a bunch of fish, but first, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe, it helps this channel out a lot, and hopefully this channel helps you guys out a lot. So, we're on the hunt for uh, some new spot basic crappies today. We might do a little shore lunch, because whenever I'm out kind of in the middle of nowhere situations doing a little uh, crappie fish and I'd like to do the shore lunch so we got the cast iron the knife and some butter and batter with and uh, yeah stay tuned it's gonna be exciting gonna be a good video and uh, let's get it going on look at this we have arrived and look around me for a second. This is what we call in the biz, in the business, uh, virgin ice, fresh ice, untapped ice. And uh, this is exactly what I like to see. No holes, no even snowmobile tracks really. Just nothing here, which leads me to believe probably nobody has fished here all year. Which leads me to believe that if there is in fact fish here, they've probably not seen a bait or been fished for since a boat, you know, since fall or summertime probably. And uh, that's what I like to see. So obviously first thing we gotta do, punch a bunch of holes. Go check it with the Markham and uh, see what we see. But uh, I'm liking this so far. Gorgeous little snowy afternoon out here. And uh, potentially some untapped crappies, bluegills, who knows what. Let's hope for the best. Stay tuned, I gotta run through these things quick and uh, get some holes going on, run through them with the graph and see what we got going on. Well, just made a quick little pass through with the MX-7, loaded. Just a ton of fish here, which leads me to believe they're probably gonna bite, and they're probably, and they're high in the water column, so they're probably gonna be real aggressive. All right, what are we gonna be using for bait, rod, reel today? I'm gonna open my shotgun case here. Just kidding, this is my long rod, ice fishing case. If you guys wanna get this case, I'll link it down below, but if you're fishing with long rods, I hate ice fishing cases and rod box, because they just, my stuff just always got tangled on them, but these ones are like individual tubes in here. I throw this thing around the back of my truck and all day on the ice and it's awesome. But anyways, today we're fishing with a bait which I've not yet featured for crappies. And it's one that I'm excited about. And we are using a spoon today. Now spoons have been around for a long time for catching everything under the ice. Crappies, walleyes, perch, everything will bite a spoon, bluegills. But this one is a cast master. It's actually a small tungsten cast master in Wonder Bread. And I'm gonna give this a go. I caught a bunch of walleyes on the bigger sizes of this earlier this year. Um, this is what is important about a tungsten spoon. Well, Castmasters have been catching a ton of fish through the ice for a long time. It's just a very simple yet has a lot of action in this style of spoon. This is a small size. Now, this spoon, if it were not tungsten, would be incredibly difficult to fish. And these are new for this year. They're a tungsten spoon. What does that mean? Well, it means you keep a much tighter line when you're fishing. You get down to those fish much quicker, and you feel everything much more. If this were not a tungsten spoon, it would take forever to get down there it would be very difficult to feel a bite and feel what's going on with that thing because it is tungsten I get a super tight line I feel all of those bites and I can get down to fish very very quickly and I'm not even gonna put bait on here most guys would probably throw some waxies on here a minnow head or a plastic all of those things would be very effective but because it's a spoon I could probably pump this bait a little bit harder get it to do a little bit more of this flashy side to side stuff if you're just using a jig a jig's a pretty stagnant thing right? you can move it up and down a spoon when you pop it it's gonna go like this and it's gonna dart side to side it's gonna flutter when it falls and it's gonna have a lot of action so it's gonna be perfect if these fish are in a bitey aggressive mood like I said no bait on there come standard with a little red treble which should be enough I should just be able to get that to dance on there and they should just absolutely smoke this thing so very excited to use that spoon this year I'll go ahead and link it down below one 
Wonder Bread's just been a phenomenal color for me this year. So if you're looking to get some, get the Wonder Bread one for sure. And this is the smallest size, but I'll link it down below. Rod-wise, you guys know what I'm using. This is the Elliott Evolution Series 44 inch ultralight. Use it as a dead stick for walleyes and other stuff. It's also a great hole hopping outside crappie rod. You guys probably think that's really long for a crappie rod. Well, the benefit of having a rod like this is when I'm standing up and fishing, you know, if you're running a 30 inch rod, you're gonna be like this all day long. I can be standing there, you know, with one inch of line out between the tip of my rod and the hole and having none of that wind affect me or anything like that. It's just super comfortable to fish and it has the perfect tip for fishing a lot of crappie stuff. And uh, the other fun part about a 44 inch rod, it's just a lot more fun to fight fish on. You get that rod to load up real deep and it feels like you're fighting them on a long open water rod. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the deal. So I'm gonna start running through some holes, turn the chesty on, get the flasher cam rolling and hopefully smoke some crappies on the new uh, Acme Tungsten Castmaster. Oh my gosh, just crazy slack line me. <laughs> oh yeah, nice crappie right there. That's what I'm talking about right there. Good looking fish. Tall one, probably about an 11 inch right there. No bait on the old Castmaster. He's gonna be lunch. He's gonna be lunch. I'm only gonna keep three for lunch. As six fillets is more than enough to feed me. I don't know how sometimes guys that keep like the full 25 fish limit, like do they only eat fish? I'm gonna drop back down close to these guys here. Oh my gosh, slack line right there. Feels like another good one. Loading up the 44 inch ultralight. Oh yeah, that's a nice one right there. Little Wonder Bread Castmaster Tungsten. Boom, two fish right there, still a graph full of them. This is exactly what every crappie guy loves to see right here. I'm getting back down close to him here. Gonna keep it up high. Pound it in place, pound it in place. Wait till they start coming. Oh my gosh, I missed that one. I missed that one. Dang it. I think he's probably gonna come back though. Oh yeah, here he comes. A little bit slower this time. Keep that bait moving without bait on it. Oh, he kind of backed off. He kind of backed off. We're gonna go down for these big red marks here. Oh my gosh, we got some movement now. Got him hooked up right there. Fish on one after another right now. He's not as big as the other ones, but still a nice looking fish right there. I hate sorting too much. When you sort too much, I feel like you just end up keeping like exclusively the big ones and like weeding all the big ones out and you're just, just kind of left with intermediate sized fish. So as long as you're kind of, um, you know, sorting and, you know, keeping fish that are acceptable, I hate, I would much rather kind of, oh, miss that guy. Got him that time. <laughs> Hooked up right there. How many baits can you fish without literally anything on it? Just a spoon and a treble hook. And that is super key for going really fast like this. Even plastics, you gotta kind of adjust them a little bit. But man, look at that. And just no time at all. I've got four fish. We're gonna let that one go, but we're just gonna keep firing that that spoon down there. <clears throat> now I'm out of fish though. We might have to move. We'll see. Cast masters have been crushing fish for a long time through the ice for me. I still use a ton of them walleye fishing, but the problem's always been when you get down to a real small like crappie or bluegill size, is that, uh, oh, there's one right there, is that they fish so light. It gets difficult to kind of feel what you're doing. Or having this tungsten size, I've been actually crushing a ton of walleyes on the the larger tungsten size, especially on the wax so far, but having that option for panfish has just been clutch. And as you can see, the beauty of it is, <coughs> There's a high likelihood when you're fishing a spoon, you don't need any bait. Look at this stack of fish. I don't know if you guys can even really tell which one's me on here. Cause there's so many other marks, but oh my gosh. The slack line, just crazy slack line. Feels like a good one too. Look at that fish, they're so up high. Oh yeah, 
real nice fish right there. <laughs> Look where that bait is. Without bait on there. Choked it. Down the hatch. Gone. Wow. They are crushing that little wonder bread today. I think fish is so heavy and nice. Look at this insane stack of fish. You guys probably... It's just unbelievable. I'm gonna pound it right there. A little pull away. Slack line right on cue. One after another. And just quality ones too. Real nice fish. Very nice. No complaints. It's about as good as crappie fishing gets right there. They could be 16 inches long and that might be a little bit better, but wow. All right, we're dropping back down. Solid red. Solid red down there. I'm gonna hammer it way up above them here. Here they come, a little pull away. Maybe supercharge them up. Slack line, again. Over and over and over. Fish after fish on that thing today. They are eating the Wonder Bread. This is when you know you don't have to change colors. <laughs> When they're eating baits with no live bait, no plastic, just pounding that spoon in place. And oh my gosh, they're just coming up. They really like this spoon when it's falling. Here it comes. Oh yeah, right there. Loaded up. One after another. Luckily it's warm enough out today where, look at that, just gone. Crazy for no bait. How aggressive these things are. And I said, luckily it's warm enough out where I can get by without fishing gloves. Cause I don't know if you even could fish gloves. When it's like this out, I might have to keep this one. He literally ate it so good. It's kind of bleeding and I don't want him to go to waste. Unbelievable. There is a lot of people fishing on this lake. I can assure you of that, but I'm about four miles away from where everybody's fishing and doing some exploring almost always pays off. <laughs> Of course it can take a lot of holes. This is not like the first spot I stopped on. I've stopped on a whole bunch of spots and this is just the one that is just stupid loaded up right now. There he goes. All right, well we've been smoking them for a little while now. I immediately caught my couple of fish I wanted for my shore lunch. And whenever I'm on this lake, I like to do this little shore lunch deal. It's a beautiful snowy afternoon out and uh, just get a rustic fish fry going and just slow it down for a second. Nobody around me and these fish are not going anywhere. So we'll come back to catching them. Don't worry about that. But uh, we're gonna run to a nice scenic little spot on shore probably and uh, get a little shore lunch going on. for the day. I'm gonna sit down, enjoy this for a little bit, and uh, get back to catching fish. All right, we're going down. Last fish here. Needs to be a good one. Needs to be a good one. All right, we're right on top of the pod. Gonna get, and get a little aggressive with them here. Get some attention going on. We'll pull away. Right there. Hooked up. Fish on. And man, these things are just squirrely today. I feel like sometimes when you're fishing basin crappies, they do, they don't like fight super hard, but these ones definitely are. And I lied. That was a blatant lie. I'm definitely gonna catch one more fish here. Alright, this is actually gonna be the last drop here. It's like the last cast in the summer. You make just a ton of them. Oh, look at this, just racing, racing, racing. The slack line right there. And it's definitely a nice fish. Just dig it hard too. <laughs> look at that. Come here, buddy. Oh yeah, that's a good one to end on right there. Nice fish for sure. Got that tungsten cast master just choked. Wonder bread is hot, but hot for me for walleyes this year. 
Now it's just pounding crappies too. Too cool. Let's let them go. All right, well that is gonna do it for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching. We absolutely hammered them on the uh, new Tungsten Castmaster and that Wonder Bread. If you guys wanna pick up any of the stuff featured in this video, I'll link a whole bunch of it down below. And uh, yeah, I do appreciate you guys watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. It does a lot for my channel. Hopefully this channel helps you guys out a lot as well. So thanks for watching. Stay safe out there in the ice and we'll see you guys next time.